Hey everybody, today is January 18th, 2022. This is the KCP community meeting. Uh, let me go ahead and post a link to this agenda into the meeting chat. Please feel free to add any items that you might want to discuss. Um, given that I did just create this issue for the agenda for the meeting for today uh, a few seconds ago, there's nothing yet, but um, I guess if anybody has any topics they'd like to uh, discuss, please let me know or just start talking. Uh, if not, one thing I would like to look at today is um, prototype two and where things stand with the open issues in that milestone. But before we do that, does anybody have anything they'd like to discuss? Just a PSA from chat. We've brain, got a place for brainstorming prototype three for the last community meeting. I'll throw the link in there, but in the doc. Thank you, Paul. All right, well, um, I will jump into looking at the milestone for starters. So if you've got any ideas for discussions, feel free to think up. Um, so I am going to go, I don't know, we'll go top to bottom here. So I think last time Jason had said that he wasn't sure if we were going to need this. Um, believe he's available today. Um, has anyone spoken with him about this in the past week or so? If not, we can um, nope. follow up with him async. All right. I haven't talked with him, but I, I remember what you're saying that this just worked with secret sync, I think is what he said. Last yeah. Uh, so this one's also assigned to Jason. I'm going to skip over it for now. Um, transparent multi-cluster, p-cluster health checks with nobody assigned. Uh, what's the latest status here? I think you can assign Joachim. He's working on that and you can okay. keep what maybe. He's not here, right? Yeah, let me... There's a text he wrote and asked for a review. So I think we are on a process. Well, can... I, I guess you will start implementation soon. So on okay. its way. Um, all right. So I can touch base with him offline. Transparent multi cluster, logical physical cluster namespaces. This is all, or also JSON. So. Let's see, user can add a second location, deploy that moves, and ingress follows. I'll, I'll follow up with Jason offline. OK, this one's me, and I had an action item to close this out from last time, and I did not. So I will follow up with that, because um, I think pretty much most of this or all of this is done. And let's see, workspace minimal RBAC. Serge, you're working on this, right? Thought Serge was here. Oh, well, I guess he left. Um, yeah, we, we had a sync meeting, David Sergis and okay. I. He's on it. We clarified, so it's on its way. Ah, yeah, he is. He's on so. I just I just hit the wrong button. I hit the wrong button to leave. No worries. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I I'm working on this. Met with uh, David and Stefan, and hopefully we'll have something um, minimalistic to demo next week Tuesday. I know the work started late, but at least I believe we reached a good consensus item. Okay. So you think we can have something to demo next week? Um, do you think we'll be able to have it either done, well, basically done uh, by the end of the month? That's the plan, yes. OK, awesome. Let's see how it works out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. OK, uh, multi-location ingress. This is also Joachim. Um, I'll touch base with him to get a status on it. 
And then David, you've got the last one here. Yeah, so this one is is moving forward as well. Um, as you saw probably in the in the demo I shared last Thursday, I implemented the cube config subresource on the personal workspaces, virtual workspace. Um, so now I'm working on the missing part, which is the kubectl plugin that would use the personal workspace, virtual workspace, and also the kube config subresource to uh, be able to very easily switch between workspaces and okay. then be you know be able to integrate that with standard kubectl uh, quite transparently mainly what we have in the at the end something uh, along the lines of what we have at the end of the you know exploration document where the workspaces live where you see you know kubectl workspace use and then uh, you you directly when you do kubectl get any object you are in the right workspace Awesome. That's um, where, sorry, that's where we had to to also uh, sync with uh, Sergius precisely so that when you switch to a given workspace with the kubectl plugin, then the error back that is applied on the key CP side, on the shard side, uh, would follow the same rules as the list of workspaces you have access from the personal workspace endpoint. That's awesome. Could you please, uh, when you have a moment, just update yeah, what's yeah, in here sure. uh, <laughs> for what we you, plan sorry. to do? <laughs> and then in terms of the objectives, are these all still relevant and look. applicable? Um, you, you can do it either now or, or async. Um, but I, I would I just want to make sure that like basically when when you think you're done with the code that it matches what's in here, or we we change what's in here to match what we, we actually are planning. We have replicated yeah. we have replicated those steps in many of the issues. Yeah. I think for next prototype we should change the approach. It's pretty hard to <laughs> yeah. check that. Yeah, out, because so. obviously user can switch to a workspace stuff like that makes sense. What is related to scheduling? Typically, uh, I assume it's it's more related to some other cluster um, controller and namespace scheduling. Yeah. yeah. Sync, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a mix here. <laughs> that that mainly, I assume, relates to the very initial demo two scenario, which was you know mixing a number of those issues. In fact, yeah, yeah, I realize I created these in a pretty confusing manner, but the objectives are actually the context of the entire deploy yep. an application yep. use case. So feel free to ignore those. Like the important stuff is <laughs> in the details section. <laughs> That's a good rip point. it apart, yeah. change it, whatever you need to. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I, I, I'll comment it yeah, anyway to um, add a, um, an example of, of what we plan to have as common lines, common line flow. Okay, so I will check in with Joachim and Jason async on their issues, and uh, I think we're we're trending in the right direction here. So thanks everybody. Any. Other comments or discussion on prototype two? All right, so um, coming back to the agenda page, thank you again, Paul, for putting in the link to this doc here. If you all haven't seen it before, it's this KCP work packages doc. And so this is uh, what we're looking at for uh, tentative plans for prototype three. Um, should we walk or talk through them right now? Would that be a good use of time? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'll just read off what's here. Uh, from a demo perspective, user begins journey with a KCP URL of a hosted KCP instance. You install the KCP plugin for Kube Control uh, using Crew. You then log into your cluster using that plugin, um, and you use some sort of OIDC authentication, such as GitHub. That puts you into a default workspace you subscribe to some sort of to like a cert manager api using an api import you create a stateful web app that uses certs provided by cert manager and saves some form of stateful data to disk and then you want to migrate your stable app between shards for whatever reason and presumably when the app migrates the data would go with it uh might be just my read, but I think we're mixing 
data migration between shards and like app data migration between locations? Yeah, I think which so. are we? I, I think I added this, both? I, Steve. I meant your your movement basically to move to a different region or something like that. Okay, if we're like spending time calling out stateful app, yeah, this is this is not. Location? That's a big question mark. What the stateful means? Who works on that? Is anybody working on stateful, like on storage? Clayton, maybe you have an overview. Yeah, I mean, so like maybe the, let's take a step back. Uh, is prototype two going to be able to move an application across a stateless application across locations at this point? Where probably, location is a physical cluster? Yeah. Because if you can't um, do that for stateless, probably stateful would be a little step. So I, maybe like that's yeah. <laughs> so that I believe should be what is in the multi-location ingress. I believe. Let me follow up with. Um, Joaquin. I don't think we have movements there. Do yeah. We? This doesn't yeah. this doesn't look like it says movement. So we have um in the document that Joachim started, we have this location discussion, which is pretty new, and I, I, I doubt we, we have that at the point. Yeah, and that, that may actually be a better prototype three target. I mean, like thematically, um it might actually be useful to write a theme up above the demo, which is what's the actual purpose. Like if prototype two is showing the API. Um, or you know, you know, the basic API or multi-cluster application failure. And we, we have some of those themes, just something that captures the overall. Probably it'd be pretty obvious that prototype three is should be a logical continuation of prototype two anyway. So that may be one. Um, experience wise, and maybe this is like uh as we kind of get some of these scratched out, going back and reviewing them in the context of does prototype two show the potential and as someone who looks at that and you walk it through and you get feedback, does that person react to that and say, oh, this actually showed me this? Um, that may be another set of inputs for the Prototype 3 demo, which would be the things that we show someone and they don't get it or they don't feel that it shows off the story as, as well as possible. So we're finding it in terms of um, maximum impact to proving the point, which was a prototype. The prototypes have that goal of um, making the experience clear and showing the possibilities um, without necessarily having to have all the technical details completely solved, such as the API design or the, uh, you know, the full capacity for movement, for instance. Yeah, my thought is if we don't move on stateful workloads, like in the prototype three stage, we're not proving anything to anyone about why this is cool. Like from a real running real apps perspective. I think like the API management stuff from prototype two is interesting, of course, but does anybody feel that way too? Like I know stateless is easy, but we're saying, oh, you're gonna get ingress that'll move around and then you can deploy stateless workloads and have no disruption. Like that is not exciting to me at all. Question is, do, do we have anybody with this focus at the moment? I don't think. Yeah, I mean, arguably this is the core of transparent multi-cluster and so like, you know, when we think about this, like we we spent a lot of time on the the foundational and the essential elements. The API part is really important. The virtualization of workspaces, but I think what, and I probably agree with you, Rob, is what we're saying is is that we need to show transparent multi-cluster and catch interest. And so if you know prototype two gets the virtualization, a little bit of the virtualization of workspaces and a little bit of the API and we hit that target, then prototype three needs to really catch that third leg of showing the promise of transparent multi-cluster. And maybe it doesn't fully require stateful, but it should capture the, the, the promise. It doesn't mean that those other things don't need to be continued to be refined, but as Stefan, you know, like right. we would need to actually commit a significant chunk of resources to hitting that bar. But I would probably agree. I also think like here, if, if we're looking at cross shard movement over workspaces and i'm not sure that a user logging in is the best story to show off like how many users deploy an app and then watch it like that's not really a, a thing i mean maybe it's the do we need to demonstrate shard movement in prototype three to convince someone that this is worth doing arguably 
and I think this is Rob's point is demonstrating the core of transparent multi-cluster, which is stateless and some element of stateful that you can read and believe that it works for state stateful is actually the thing that will make all of this useful. Like a generic API system for installing global APIs is cool, um, but anybody could go do that today. There's plenty of them out there. There's a thousand startups doing, you know, I can take a database and get to CRUD apps and websites quickly. The, the key innovation here is we're connecting that to the existing workload footprints of existing Kubernetes users who have this problem today and by and we will show that arc from what they're doing today to this new system. So all that other stuff exists to support transparent multi-cluster as the bridge from the old to the new. I, also, yeah. I, mean, I, I, think, I think there's definitely a value proposition for the here, like the cert manager folks. Um, but that's not who, but I guess maybe that, that, that's what I think we're kind of, Rob and I are kind of saying in a, a roundabout way, which is a way to build a control plane for everything is a super cool concept. Prototype two showed that off. And then there's a, there's a ramp down period, like prototype two should show that if we don't quite show that in prototype two, or we take feedback and we need to, we need to continue it in prototype three, but there's an even more important scenario, which is we're not trying to build a control plane for everything except cube. We're trying to build the control plane for everything that starts with cube. Hmm. So it's not it's not saying that we shouldn't do things in prototype three that that touch those. But maybe if we were to stack rank the priorities of the things we're trying to show, we're we've got prototype two covers showing the potential of workspace virtualization and API virtualization finish those off, round those off, uh, smooth out the experience based on the things that we did in two, and then lead into the, um, hit that core of uh, showing that a workload can live on a cluster, but not be bound to the fate of that cluster. And that includes stateless and stateful, and maybe the stateful part, we just, we do the bare minimum there. Um, perhaps we don't need persistent volumes, and that's an open question. We can work through those questions. The one thing I liked about the certs and the statefulness was like, it's not like we're talking about terabytes of data, we're talking about kilobytes. And so I feel like that makes the problem very tractable. And it's not like we're gonna, we'll have to improve that system for whatever is copying data around, of course. Um, but it's yeah. useful and small. So maybe maybe that's the, the comment on, cert manager does hit one part of the transparent multi-cluster, but it hits the, um, it hits kind of a, a, it's a step up and then you got to show the meat of the argument. So you're kind of making the leading arguments for, um, you know, you start with the idea that all these people have all these applications that can live together. And then you're showing um, there's real benefits for the high level constructs in those applications that can apply in multiple clusters and the certain manager stuff does that. And then you lead with the, the core premise of your argument, which is, and an application isn't just those high level concerns, it's the real meat of a workload and the cube workload is what's being targeted. And you can see this demo that shows off, you know, as much of a percent of that as we can hit to establish that this is something real and meaningful that benefits all cube users. Do we wanna, double down at all on like inserting a step in here about like joining a cluster to your fleet or and, and like polishing that experience since like we're talking about locations here it's like we could insert it's register the new location and here's how you get the agent installed and, like the sinker whatever it's called um, you know and that stuff it, i guess the question is uh, okay. i comment and say somewhere exactly on that that we should have this story and movement makes sense if we at the new region and then lose a movement. So it's part of that story, fits where well. Yeah, it, and I'd probably say like, I think it's important. I would probably, if in a time boxed fashion, showing the core idea of movement and something that resembles what we think is a reasonable technical approach, like in reasonable technical approach means we're taking the first stab at it. Showing the actual movement and being able to critique the actual movement is far more important than the act of registering in the assumption that um, the vast majority of users will never go through that ad flow. It's not that it's not important to show, it's it can build into the sequence, but if we spend most more of our time on that than we do on the, the show, then the end result to an end user is 
cool, I can add clusters to a multi-cluster manager. I can do that 700 places today. Like what's our, what is the unique value thing that KCP adds? Virtualization, API flexibility, and your real existing cube workloads can fit in this larger system. Now, maybe that another question then to ask is, who after prototype three will be able to make progress that wouldn't be? So like, that's kind of the, there's some implicate like some of the stuff here is implications that lead to other groups being able to try these ideas, groups, people, teams, community members being able to try out some of these ideas, some of them in so that they have their own dependencies so they can go say like, hey, I tried to do API registration. It didn't work for like, for instance, for like App Studio type folks. Who's the user that we're trying to make happy um, for the workload side? Who needs the workload stuff? to be in a, at least a basic form so they can try it. Is that again, maybe like pipeline service, like somebody building, you know, the Tecton pipeline service. Is that another type of construct um, such as um, somebody who could show off like a fleet management, right? Running mostly homogenous workloads. Is it the end user for a sandbox trial kind of user? Yeah, I think we can outline those uh, once we get the, the script. So, Steve, I saw you removed movement between shards. Um, do we also want to show that? Or, like, that's what Clayton you and Rob were saying is, like, not the sort of thing that a user cares about. So from a demo perspective, we don't need to highlight it. So it's kind of one of those things that requires a fair amount of prep work. So showing some meaningful incremental progress is useful. I guess another question would be, are there other aspects, like ultimately sharding is there to deal with the scale characteristics of running a service and the failure resiliency of this control plane? Are there other aspects of control plane um, resiliency that we would need to demonstrate um, that maybe uh, are different from the sharding stuff. I don't know. Like I, I like kind of continuing the sharding stuff to where you know whether the sharding stuff is going to work. Um, do we have to show it if we believe that it works versus showing something more compelling? Uh, and maybe Steve, like I mean, it's also like it, it just seems like not a it, the user doesn't care in this case. The user doesn't uh, benefit right. anything from it. So I, I think if we wanted to show it off, we'd need to come at it from a different angle. Um, to make it coherent. Or it's like a different demo that's yeah, operationally right. focused. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I think like having a, having a demo for someone, like this is a user-focused one. Having a demo that's like, hey, I am a provider of an API for my company. Here's how I manage all of this stuff across different subscribers. That seems useful, at least to me. Um, Maybe maybe that's getting into um, so like Steve, you could maybe argue that what you described is we're we're focusing here on virtualizing teams. That was kind of prototype one and two, um, and virtualizing teams involves workspaces and APIs. Now we're looking at virtualizing the physical place that workloads run. Is prototype three, and the elements of it lead into you know if you're if you don't have no workloads, there's no point to having a control plane. But if you have workloads and you can show that you virtualized physical locations. Um, then the third step is, great, now I have a central control point under which an attacker or a misconfiguration can destroy my entire enterprise. Therefore, um, the fourth demo or fifth demo, or you know, like the chain of, of reasoning there would be, I want to show operationally that the control plane is not just the trivial, I can write a bash loop that runs my entire company, like, because that's what GitOps can do today. But instead, we're offering something new, which allows us to isolate, separate, scale, break the, um, the control plane problem up into uh, chunks that offer defense and depth or resiliency or lo locatability, um, make up some property names. So that could be that that could be the framing that you could say it is that the sequence of virtualizing teams, virtualizing workload mm -hmm. placement, and then virtualizing control plane um, hierarchy or defense in depth. We got to come up with a good word for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I was missing the uh, bullet point that Rob put in as the theme of 
prototype theory that you just said. And I think given that, yeah, all of that makes sense as future work. And and there may be an argument too, which is um, if all of the use cases in the near term focus more on, uh, could you actually go run what we have today, just showing two of those key concepts, virtualizing teams and locations, it can take a little longer to talk about the virtualization and defense in depth as long as we're making progress. Perhaps there's another set of things, which is, well, what are the more pragmatic implications of um, the the basic, I can run this today and it's uh, it's useful and resilient enough that it accomplishes its purpose, like that security integration or you know, authorization, et cetera. We can make some arguments around those elements. The, uh, the realness of it as a uh, consumable unit for someone who wants to get those first two benefits. For like a sec, we want to put something around like you're talking control plane failure or like the sharding movement, like whatever. Is that like outside of this? Is that prototype four or five type stuff you said? That's what I'm hearing. I'm not, so, I'm not so sure. I'm not sure we want to assign those to prototypes. I mean, there's a focus for a prototype for sure. But there might be stories, side stories, which we work on and make progress. Yeah. It doesn't mean that it will be the, the focus next time. Maybe it won't. Maybe it's just a small thing we will show. Well, maybe it's not even shown. But maybe just the theme of the demo then? Because like fundamentally, if you want to show that off, I think you need to start with something very different than a user begins with the KCP login, right? Like Sure. So I, I want to suggest a framing here. So what is the point of why we are doing KCP? It is to establish a higher, better value in the term until people accept that it's higher, until people believe that it has no value, right? Like it'll teach us things, but other th we could have done all these things individually and taught us. It's the, the synthesis of those three um, goals that actually makes it more than the sum of its parts. And so in a sense, the what the prototypes are trying to get to is to show that these systems work together or that these systems or think close analogs to them work together to establish the value proposition. Once you've established the value proposition, um, you have a whole bunch of other things that you need to do, which are just the very iterative, like keeping going. It doesn't mean that each prototype should only work on the thing that shows the value proposition, but it does put a very large weight on the, the the prototypes are supposed to be thumps that like set a foundation in place after which people are like yeah 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 i get it you don't need to explain it to me i can see it um or you know we go and refine how we present kcp to the world in the in the repo project and we say um kcp is a system for building control planes over kubernetes that makes it super easy to run workloads across multiple locations and lets you bring in extend and and bring together all the elements of your um, application infrastructure into one convenient spot for tens of thousands of teams. Like that's, a, you know, we, we want to get that value proposition and be like, and then run the demo. The demos that hit the thumps versus the demos that show the other pieces, it's not that we're saying all of 100% of one and zero of another, but we should be like, if you can't show the thump, there's no point to doing any of it. Once we've shown the thumps or once we have those like those, those big, um, once you have those pillars set, you can start building the rest of the house. And of course, while you're building the house, you know, you're proving out this idea, you do need those other elements going. So I might say maybe there's two demos or there's a, um, a demo and then a, uh, a sub element. And maybe we just, we have one that's the focus that shows kind of the key story. We don't have to tie all of the elements together um, that are necessary to hit the next thump. So I, I'm a little, I don't want to, I want charting needs to make enough progress that we understand, but we also may want to spend a little bit more time on showing some of the other parts of the ideas, even though jumping between things can slow us down. We still haven't established the key value proposition of why we're doing this. Or we haven't shown it. We've we believe in it. We have to translate that belief into other people's belief. So maybe like another fact, another way of saying that was like, can we ruthlessly go through the demo and uh, everything that's in the core demo has to have a reason that it attaches to the theme to make people believe that, that this is a worthwhile investment. 
and the stuff that's that's secondary to that that we know we'll need, um, we put in a sub, you know, either in like a second demo or um, we hit like um, demonstrate concept that's that's a that helps establish like uh, the larger framework, but stands on its own. Um, sharding might be that, but I just I'd like to see a demo of sharding. But I don't think, an, as Steve said, a user doesn't need to see the sharding demo. A lot of the underlying virtualization stuff, probably they don't need to see demos of all of the underlying stuff. If asked, we want to be able to do that demo. Maybe that's like another way of framing it. Like the core theme, there's deep dive elements off of it that we should be able to show. Um, so reading over the demo really quick with that in mind, is there anything we want to show off around like actually installing the cert manager like whatever is backing the actual implementation of that api is that interesting to anybody i was going to bring that up that the api imports and api exports that we haven't written yet are going to be pretty powerful and that like the the theme there is that an operator or a service provider can deploy one or a small number of um, controllers or operators and have them act on the entire, you know, across organizations, across workspaces, which I guess by itself isn't all that new because, you know, without workspaces, things just go against a cluster and it's fine. So I think this is more of a scale question, but I, I do think it's a very important feature. And one of the main things that interests me in um, getting KCP successful. So I would like to highlight it. Whether or not users care about it, I don't know. But yeah, you know, yeah. it, it, either it's in the main demo or it's in a secondary demo. But I do think it's worth it. Like the salient bit for the users, they don't care at all. They like push a button and it, they don't have to. Right, but an admin's one of I guess the, sal the salient bit might be that they're not installing Cert Manager. Yeah, they're just I think it's subscribing like, to it. I want certificates, and right. can we make it as easy as possible for them to get the APIs added to their workspace and have some sort of operator that's operating on them without them having to care about it? Or yeah, about showing, it. showing that it doesn't hurt is important. <laughs> Yeah, the operator and the operator is really a detail. So in a sense, um, uh, like this is kind of one of those like the best outcome would be you never know what provides that API. That's an irrelevant detail to you. It is consumption and successful, and then we can go peer behind the covers. But like we don't want to fetishize the the operator or the controller. Yeah. It's literally about the API, and that is actually part yeah. of like, what we've kind of said is cube sometimes fixates more on the things that interact with the system than the API. We are not making that mistake here. This control plane is about API period. Yeah, and an another point uh, which is might be very interesting is is a API evolution and what has been already somehow designed about how to deploy uh, API evolutions according to a number of rules or constraints of rights of the various workspace owners. But I assume there actually, are some tenants here that which can be very interesting for. This is very something. For prototype four, right? Yeah. Import export, we start with and evolution and schemas and sure. stuff. Right. I, I guess it sounds like we, we have at least like three of these, right? Like so we have like the like this is useful to a user because they're thinking about APIs. This is useful to an admin because of this resilience movement thing. This is useful to like a KCP admins, right? And then this is useful to an author of some API because of evolution because of subscription, right? Like these are separate. I think we might want to write them down. And and all other things being equal, and I think this gets into like how deep do we need to go on those, um, show the, the best, strongest element of each versus showing too many elements of each. So like API evolution is a deep topic. Late, we can show more of API evolution later if we're reasonably confident that what we show now has the necessary foundation. If someone asks us, oh, but you didn't think about API, uh, API evolution, it's like, aha, and you point them to something. But if you labor that point, you lose the impact of what we're going for, which is consume, as Steve said. I think, Steve, your three captured it pretty well. Consume easily uh, a, a real benefit of the virtualization of the, of the real, and then um, 
the, cons the person providing that API now has a person to provide that API to. So does it make sense to come up with three scripts? Like what I'm starting to do, does that make sense? Or is that too much? Is that, are we losing focus, et cetera, et cetera? Um, I, I, I would say that you, to do the demo, you could maybe do like a pan and zoom style with starting with the end user and then doing a pan and zoom. But I think it's fairly useful to split them up because um, you know that gives us an opportunity to hang additional things and then kick those additional things to later efforts by refining each demo flow to the key. So I think that's pretty useful. All right, um, how do we start breaking that down? I mean, do we want to do that here or do we want to do that offline? Either is fine with me. Um, I know, uh, you know David, you had done a lot of work on the negotiation in the past. So uh, if you are willing and interested, maybe take a stab. Um, doesn't have to be right now, of course, uh, or anybody else um, who wants to try and come up with a, um, an outline for the API author demo. Yeah, David, you can start and we sync in the morning. Yeah, OK. All right. Did we settle on three, three different flows here, the workload flow, the API author flow, and the Control plane resiliency. Well, sounds good. Yeah, sounds good to me. All right. Um, I think we can try and flush some of this out, I think. And unless anybody has any other comments on what we've just been talking about, oh, Go back real quick and see if we've got anything else for the agenda. Just a last question. It's a question mark at the top. Should we fix something about the date? Mm, good question. Is this a two months effort? Is this a six week, like two sprint effort? What is this? Sooner is better because we still haven't demonstrated the core value proposition of KCP, which is if things in the demo don't show the core value proposition of moving workloads, why are we doing them? Um, and if we need to, if we can cut and accomplish that without getting in depth, that's a better outcome, right? Like until transparent multi-cluster feels transparent, we don't really have a bridge to justify this investment. And it's, that's not like a threat. That's like a, like we, we shouldn't lose sight of the forest for the trees here. The forest is to have a control plane, you need workloads. To have workloads, you must bring cube along. How do you bring cube along? Which means if we really want to be lean, that's what you're describing. Minimal variable product, product. That's basically months, maybe max after prototype two. And, and to be fair, um, we're as I think as you noticed noted early on, Stefan, we have spent a lot of time on the other elements. Um, you know, yeah. We did the early design for transparent multi cluster. We have um, the doc that hopefully Ben Bennett is gonna. Is, is cleaning up for us, which is the, the set of workflow things that we just expect to work. Those are the use cases that establish this larger theory. Um, a little bit of rotation towards that and accomplishing that goal is not a mistake. Uh, if we believe we have enough of the pieces in place for API and workspace virtualization to, to keep moving, to, to focus and rotate a little bit on that while we gather feedback on those first two areas. Because we will be getting feedback, um, you know, from people looking at, oh, workspaces and APIs are awesome. Uh, here's new use case X. Here's um, here's f fix Y. Oh, we can put that in place pretty quickly. Can you tell us whether you think you'd use this independent? Oh, we would. Um, great, cool. While well, we're working on transparent multi cluster. So if we if we say a month, like end of February, basically, this will force us to really focus on the core steps. Yeah, mainly API exports um, and the underlying virtual world spaces as well. Uh, the, 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 there is, I mean, much to do, Not if not everything to do here. Am I right? Or? Yeah, we have to do API imports and exports, which would replace the um, inheritance that I did for workspaces. Yeah. Um, 
we have the org workspaces by then, so it makes sense. Yeah. The storage yeah. bit for the Stateful app, that's a big question mark for me. Maybe that's worth to start another meeting tomorrow or so to move that forward. Yeah, I think we should start talking about that as soon as possible. So do you want to put end of February on here for starters? I like that if we if we think we might want to show something at KubeCon, that gives us three more prototypes to get through. Which which KubeCon are you talking about? Fall? If there's something in EU KubeCon that we wanted to be able to demo on the side. So I, I, and again, last year we touched on these three elements. We we touched when we when we did the May demo, we touched on the three elements. So to get to if we if we don't believe we've we would evolved and added some new ideas but are they fundamentally different from the ideas we presented last year uh no so then it would be can you show in convincing detail that these aren't just ideas might be a way paul of, of framing that which is um yeah I, and again like the depth of the idea i know this is like everybody's comfort zone but like you don't have to write down or do everything. We don't have to have it all be working, but we do have to be able to say, we're confident that we can make this work. Now tell us whether this idea works for you by trying it. If you can't accomplish those, like try it, ex explain it, try it, or explain it, show it, someone can try it. That's the bar um, for transparent multi-cluster at least. Um, and uh, some of this could be like, uh, if, we spend the focus and we're not getting there that's an input to perhaps you know we're looking at the wrong tree or we're you know we're focused on the wrong part of the problem um so that may be another way of framing it uh, in terms of timing which is we should be pretty confident at kubecon.eu that this doc hunts that we're on the right path that you know there's people there's interest um the things that we would do should demonstrate that convincingly to someone who is not us And keep kind of you is a good is a good framing point is as good as any that'll be about one year since you know we pitched the the very minimal uh, foundation of the idea all right so i'm gonna put end of february in here and mm -hmm. as the next few weeks go by we'll touch base at least every week presumably more frequently and if we need to adjust it we'll talk about it mm -hmm. And Andy, maybe like to correlate with that, uh, exit conditions for prototype two. Um, when prototype two goes out, are we actually, is anyone actually gathering the, did prototype two hit the mark? I think is, uh, is something we should be taking into account as we're um, you know, beginning to plan for prototype three. Prototype two would probably be the first formal deliverable. And so uh, what, are the, what are the expectations from, what do we learn from it and how does that influence what we're doing next? Um, are we iterating on the virtualization? Like what feedback do virtualizing teams and APIs give us? Good point. All right. Um, did anything else come in? No, all right. Uh, last call for topics or we can end early. All right, let's end early. <laughs> oh. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, bye. Thank you. See you.